Hello, my name is Lori Rubin. I'm with ViewBug, and I've got a fantastic photographer with us today, William Ennis, and he is a wedding photographer based here in Southern California. William, thank you so much for joining us today. Great, I'm excited to be here. Great, well, let's start out. Let's talk about how you got into photography, what really inspired you, and why, why weddings? It, it, it is now, but it's really funny. I never thought I would photograph weddings. Um, when I was young, I loved photography, and I did it for about uh, 15 years. Uh, but then I had a career in the aerospace industry. I actually spent about 30 years uh, running aerospace companies. There was a 10-year period where I never took one single photograph. My wife actually documented my children growing up. And in 1998, I was on a business trip out in the East Coast, and I ended up sticking my head in a camera store, came out with a new camera, a new lens, and a flash, and uh, quickly was back into photography. A year later, I had a Hasselblad, I had the latest Nikon, I had a Leica M6. Uh, but my passion then was, um, was uh, landscape photography. Uh, weddings were the furthest thing from my mind. I thought wedding photography was cheesy. Uh, I'm going to date myself here, but when I got married, I got married in a powder blue tux with ruffles. <laughs> so, I know. Uh, but then two things happened. Uh, in 1999, 2000, um, I went to hear a speaker at a professional photographer's group, and it turned out to be a wedding photographer, and it fascinated me. And the same week, my nephew up in Canada asked me to photograph his wedding. So I bought a book on wedding photography, uh, read it in a week, went up there and shot his wedding. And uh, ever since, uh, since 19, uh, excuse me, 2004, I've been a full-time wedding photographer. I love it. Something I never thought I'd do. Isn't that funny? That happens to a few people where they just can't believe <laughs> they're actually uh, making a profession out of something they never thought that they would. But uh, William, I know. William, your images are absolutely stunning. Uh, I've seen thousands and thousands of uh, great photographers in my career, and I, I really put you at the top as one of the best uh, wedding photographers. Just absolutely beautiful. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank beautiful. you. I really appreciate that. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, your your process of how you do these uh, beautiful wedding images. Um, let's talk about the before. Uh, we're, we're starting out from scratch. You're meeting the bride and groom. Uh, do you like to get to really get to know them so that you can take those intimate moments, like uh, you know these these moments here where they're together? Uh, tell us a little bit about but the before you press the shutter. Uh, the before part is really important, and uh, it's funny you mention that because it's one of the things I've been working on this year. Uh, my goal this year is for me to only hire clients that I like. Um, I say that jokingly, but it, it's true. You really have to have a connection with people to get great wedding images. So uh, I do love meeting with people. Um, I like clicking with people. Unfortunately, uh, not everybody uh, will be a client. but. Once they do sign up, then I really encourage them to do an engagement session. I think that's a great time to get to know each other, uh, learn about each other. Uh, no pressure on an engagement session, like a wedding day when it's crazy. Then come the wedding day, they're much more comfortable both with me as a person and uh, they're also comfortable with me and my camera, which makes a big difference in the trust factor and being able to capture some of these images. Absolutely. Uh, and you can tell, too, these are, you know, genuinely just absolutely gorgeous images. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about workflow, uh, which is so important in any type of aspect of photography that you're into. So when, once you get these gorgeous images, you have them on your memory card and you're downloading them, what, what do you do? Do you back them up first? Tell us the process of what you do after you take these images. I will, and it's funny uh, you brought that up because uh, I do speak. I have a program. I did it, for instance, at uh, PPA in Nashville this year on workflow. After spending 30 years in the aerospace driven uh, aerospace industry, which is very workflow driven, um, I took a lot of lessons learned from that industry and brought it over to my photography business. So yes, the first thing I do is I download all the raw files and I back them up. But to compress them, I use a program called Adobe DNG Converter. So I take all the raw files because maybe my second shooters are shooting Nikon or Canon. I'm shooting Panasonic. We have a blend of raw files. 
but by using Adobe DNG Converter, I can make them a lot smaller with um, not losing any image quality. I put that hard drive, and I do it to a hard drive, which I keep in a, a fireproof safe. I then cull the images, and I use Photo Mechanic. Um, I tell people they shouldn't be loading thousands of images into Lightroom because Lightroom is not the fastest program in the world. So by using Photo Mechanic, it's quick. You can open RAW files very quickly, review them, and I can call a wedding. I may come home with three, 4,000 images, and I can call it down to 800, 900 images in about an hour. Yeah. After I do that, I then import my keepers into Lightroom. And what I do is when I import, I make sure to check. It's up in the upper right-hand corner in Lightroom, a box called um, Create Smart Previews. And after it's all loaded into Lightroom, I zip file my Lightroom catalog and those smart previews, and I outsource them for color correction. I'm a big believer in outsourcing. Um, I believe if you cannot do it economically or you really hate doing it, which there are certain tasks that for sometimes photographers hate, you should be outsourcing. So I outsource my color correction. About a week later, it comes back. Uh, in the form of a Lightroom catalog file. I click on it. Uh, my 800 plus images open up and are all color corrected. At that point, I uh, will export them out of Lightroom using a plugin by Perfectly Clear. Um, and the great thing about that plugin is it will smooth the face, it will make the face thinner, it could put catch lights in the eyes, it will get rid of uh, certain imperfections. It's a pretty amazing plugin. And those are just my proofs. I will then select 20, 30, 40 images like you're looking at on my website that I like to call selects and then I go through those and I will work on those in Photoshop and I use a number of different programs within Photoshop. I love Rad Lab by uh, Totally Rad. I like using Nick plugins and Topaz plugins and, and I also use Alien Skin Exposure 7 which is great for replicating the look of film. And then I'll, I'll work on those images. And those are images that uh, will go on my website, will go on my blog, uh, will be posted to Facebook. So anything the public really sort of sees has been worked on in Photoshop as well. Yeah, these, these are beautiful. Now, your black and white images, I saw a few of these. Here's one uh, that we're looking at right now. What program do you use to convert to black and white? Uh, I really like, it depends. If it's really a quick black and white, conversion, I'll use Totally Rad, but if it's something that uh, is going to get printed or like this, that what we're looking at, I like uh, Silver Effects Pro too by, uh, well, it was Nick, now right. it's Google. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I used to work for Nick Software, uh, so I'm very familiar with oh, that. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm, I'm, I'm glad it's still around. When it got sold, yeah. I went, uh-oh, but uh, yeah, it's yeah. still there and it still works great. Yes, it is great software. Well, these are really lovely, and each one is unique. Uh, and you know, even the the technique, uh, some of these, like for instance, here you've got kind of that soft focus look up front, and you're really focusing on the bride and groom, just really technically spot on. So uh, thank you. It's really nice. Love this. So here we've got an example of a nice kind of vignette, uh, kind of an artistic type look. Yes. This image was actually shot in daylight, and I used an off-camera flash. Uh, to the uh, to the uh, camera left, I believe at the time it was a. It'll come to me in a minute. It was a larger flash. It uses a battery pack, so it's a stronger than just a regular uh, speed light. I used one, and I underexposed and took the photo. And then yes, the vignette is done in post production, um, either using a Photoshop action or uh, totally rad. Yeah, here's another uh, one of your black and whites. Just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Very nice. The Disney Center. Yep. Very good. So you got those nice group <laughs> shots here as well. Yeah, a little small group. Uh, I love group shots. It's actually um, not so much maybe families uh, that can get crazy, but I love groups. I always do what I call the firing squad, the traditional get them in a line and take that shot. And I jokingly tell the bride and groom that's for grandma. But then... <laughs> I really enjoy breaking the groups up like this into into mini groups and sort of play along with the you know each each large wedding party group has its own personality and sort of play along with them and get some cool shots. 
So tell us, if somebody's blinking and their eyes are closed, do you swap out heads on any of these, or is that a secret? Uh, I do not. Ah. Um, but, ah. <laughs> what I like, I know, what I try to do is take, when I have a shot like this lined up with the camera technology today in the frames per second, you can squeeze off quite a few shots. So I will take multiple shots, and then my secret is, is when I'm culling in photo mechanic, I tell people, this is going to sound very cold, but the first image I come across where pretty well everybody's eyes are open and it has good expression, I accept that photo and I don't even look at the rest of them because mm. that just takes time. Yeah. So, but you got, but you have to shoot multiple shots. Otherwise, you will be in the business of swapping heads. And who wants to be doing that type of Photoshop work? Exactly. Do you have an assistant with you during these uh, wedding shots? You know, uh, I do now. For many years, I I, I ran solo or I had a second, I still have second photographers, but I had a young uh, man contact me about a year and a half ago, He's, I think he's 19 now, asked if he could assist. I, I brought him along and it's an amazing thing. So besides carrying my gear, which is really nice, or getting certain things set up for me, he's an amazing guy. At 19, he can shoot Canon, Nikon, and Panasonic. So depending who's with us, if he's, if he's got his job done from the assisting point of view, he can even second shoot now. That's great. Yeah, but that's handy. <laughs> okay, so you've got your images. You've done some post-processing. Uh, they've gone through. They've selected uh, some of their favorite images. So you offer albums and prints. Uh, tell us a little bit about the final. I do. I do. And for the longest time, I, as I mentioned before, if I didn't like it or it wasn't cost-effective, I would outsource so for many years I outsourced album design because I'm a little ADD and I couldn't just quite get you know I would need like three verticals and there'd be only two verticals and a horizontal and it would drive me crazy mm -hmm. but a year and a half ago I purchased album a uh, fundy album designer mm -hmm. and it is the most unbelievable purchase I've made I can now design a complete album in 15 minutes Fantastic. And it's so easy to make changes. Yeah. So what I do is I design, they choose their images. Uh, I may tweak them in Photoshop. I then use uh, Fundy to design the album. And then I put it up online so clients can proof it online. And it works really, really well. Fantastic. I believe in albums. I really try to get all my clients to purchase albums where they can. I would really highly recommend if you want to get inspired with wedding photography is check out William's website. It's innisphotography.com, and he's got some beautiful uh, images here. Just absolutely, we just went through a couple of them, and I'm just absolutely blown away. <laughs> Fantastic! It looks like you also have a blog, and you can contact him as well there. So um, I really want to thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us, telling us your workflow, and letting us see some of your fantastic images. Well, thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. All right. Bye bye.